It is a delight to be back and worship with you again at Wabash Christian Church to enjoy the beauty of this sanctuary made even more grand with the festive decorations. Good to see all of you again. I bring you greetings from the Christian Church in Indiana. 160 <laughs> congregations who are joined together in common witness and mission with you, uh, together doing things that we could not do alone, being in mission together across our state and around the world. Thank you for all the ways that you support that work. So, Isaiah talks to us about stuff. I thought about a stump and being stumped. It happens to me, maybe to you, again and again, that we're stumped. You work and you work and you work, and you think that you are doing a good job, and then they give the promotion to someone else. And you've done the best that you could possibly do. I mean, what more could you have possibly done? You're stumped. Life is sailing along, never better. Everything is going like it should be. And then you feel a lump or a tingling or a pain. And the doctor says that you have something serious to deal with. How can this be? You're stumped. You give your child every possible assist in doing their schoolwork and getting along with others, but they're still not making it. How are they going to make it? You can't be there for them every minute of their life. For them, you're stumped. You have an addiction. It doesn't matter what, it could be to anything. Alcohol, drugs, food, tobacco, sex, work, internet. It possesses you, it haunts you. How can you be free? You're stumped. Suddenly, without warning, your company announces that it's closing or moving. Some people that you don't know have never met you in some boardroom a long ways away, decided it made sense, and now you feel like a pawn on a chessboard, moved at the whim of someone else, how do you regain your sense of worth and power? You're stumped. You put your faith and trust in the leadership of the Congress and the President, but every day you read something new in the paper that amazes you. Who are these people? Who can you trust? You're stumped. Finally, just when it looked like you were getting a little ahead, you invest in the stock market and watch your IRA portfolio grow like crazy. Your retirement seems secure, so you say to yourself, and then overnight, the market collapses and all your gains are lost. What do you do now? You're stuck. There is no longer the spark that was once between you and your spouse. You lead parallel lives without depth or meaning or purpose. You coexist. How did it get to this point? How can it go on? Is there any hope? You're stunned. 
You used to believe in God, really did, but then with all the crazy things that have happened to you, with all the mystery in the world, with no sure sign from God, anytime, anywhere, how do you really know? Does it even matter? Your faith feels small and you're not sure it matters. You're stuck. Are you stopped? Chances are, in one way or the other, you are. We are all stopped. We can't get past it. And being stumped is not so good. But I have good news for you today. The scripture says that a shoot will come forth from the stump of Jesse, one of King David's kinfolk. And this shoot is going to turn things around. And maybe that seems and sounds kind of lame if you are sitting there stumped. But then maybe you haven't dealt with a stump before. In one of my previous homes, I had a chute that drove me nuts. The house had some hedge across the front, and once upon a time, a, a tree had come up volunteer in that hedge. The previous owner had apparently just cut the thing off of the ground so that when I inherited the place, there was a stump about this big in the landscape underneath the hedge. And so I had to deal with that thing all the time. To dig it out would have destroyed the landscaping. So week after week, I had to deal with the chute that came. And it sent out a chute continuously. I could hardly keep up with the thing. When everything else I had planted was dying, here would come a tree sticking up through the bushes. There was no way to stop it. No way to control it. If I tried to mar it or tried to damage it, it would heal over itself and then come out on the other side. If I put something over it, it would sneak out and find light another way. That stump had life. And the scripture says that Jesse's stump has life. And that your stump has life. There shall come forth a stump, a shoot from the stump of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with equity for the meat of the earth. The wolf, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the lion, and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The suckling child shall play over the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. 
doesn't sound like the world we live in, does it? Here's our world. Iraq. Syria. Paris. Brussels. Colorado Springs. Chicago. Wabash. But we are calling today peace something. Let's talk about peace. We can sing sweet songs of peace all we want. But what about our streets? Right outside this door. Where is the peace? We can't seem to create it in our cities, our nation, between our nations, or sometimes in our own families. Isaiah's poetry sounds like crazy talk. Leopards and goats and snakes and babies are not going to coexist. And what Isaiah says about Wolves and bears and lions is contrary to nature. They can't raise. They can't eat straw. They don't have the right kind of teeth. And even if they could chew it up and swallow it, they can't digest it. In order for Isaiah's prophecy to come true, how many laws of nature would have to change. So also, peace seems contrary to human nature. Violence appears to be programmed into us. Do you think that peace will ever come in the Middle East or in Eastern Congo or in Korea, or in your family. Sometimes I think so, but just when a little progress is made, someone does something foolish, and then I'm stopped. But the promise of Isaiah is that one is coming, has come, like a shoot out of a stump, like new hope growing out of our despair, that knows the way, that knows how, that can find a way to peace even when it is inhibited, like a shoot seeking out the light. And that one is the Messiah, our Lord. Jesus Christ. Only one person in all of history has been a lion and a lamb at the same time. Only one person has been born in a barn and yet crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Only one person has been both servant and master, both victim and victor, both condemned criminal and presiding judge, Jesus is the miracle. He is the Prince of Peace. He put the wildness and the mildness together. Weakness and strength are combined in one life. And Jesus comes to bring peace to the whole world. But it involves a change in our very Around the home that my wife Diane and I had in Texas years ago were a bunch of scrub oak trees. This time of year, it was obvious which ones they were. When all the other trees had lost their leaves, the scrub oak's leaves hang on stubbornly through all the gales of winter. It is only in the spring 
when the sap begins to rise again, that the tree finally relinquishes its hold on last year's crop. The old vestiges of a past life drop off when the signal comes that new life is about to begin. When that signal comes, the tree lets go. So too are we called to shed the crustiness of our old dysfunctional life as we give the signal. Maybe it's the reading of, again of this powerful scripture that signals to us that a new day is dawning. Maybe it's calling today Peace Sunday when we know good and well that peace is not yet. Maybe it's believing that a shoot can come forth from Jesse's stump because that is what shoots do in a stump that has life. Ultimately, peace comes from God. The age-old conflicts of our world between Palestinians and Israelis, Christians and Muslims, Catholics and Protestants teach us that harmony is not a do-it-yourself project. Divine intervention must be part of any peace that is deep and lasting. Because peace is more than the absence of conflict. It is a condition of justice and wholeness that requires wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. It is never enough to establish peace and justice in one corner of the world, in an isolated Christian community, or in Indiana town. Conflict and injustice anywhere threaten society everywhere. So our vision should be directed to that holy mountain of God where no one hurts or destroys anymore and the earth, the whole earth, will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. The godly leader who will rule this peaceful new world is Jesus the Christ, the shoot of the stump of Jesse, the one whose birth we celebrate at Christmas, the bearer of the Spirit of the Lord. He is the one who brings us the peace that passes all understanding, but also the one who brings a sword of sacrificial struggle in the middle of a violent war. To follow Jesus on his mission of peacemaking is to accept the fact that peace is not natural, that it requires transformation, that it comes from God, and that it will not be complete until the knowledge of the Lord fills the earth as the waters cover the sea. Are you stumped? Me too. But there is good news this day. Good news for you and for me. Good news for Wabash Christian Church. God will bring forth a new shoot. And its leaves will look like peace, and hope, and reconciliation, and harmony. And nothing, nothing, Nothing will stop it from happening. Thanks be to God.